you mentioned obviously how tight knit everyone was. His untimely death was just so tragic for Welsh football and it kind of impacted Welsh football in a real negative way, but in a real positive way as well, because they tried to use his passing as 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 momentum almost to kind of move forward and, and, and sort of bring forward you know younger players and, and continue the good things he was doing. As such a, a tight knit group, how did his passing impact on all of you? How did you take it on? I was devastated. Um, you know, I was I shared a room with Gary for four years, um, and although he drove me mad with his stupid guitar and his his silly you know his silly laugh that he had, um, if I wanted to go anywhere on the field, play anywhere, he would be the first one I picked. Uh, and the same yeah. with what Alan said. He was a great professional, you know, still now keeping contact with Tommy and Eddie's kids uh, and Louise, his wife at the time. Um, and we were just devastated. I, couldn't, I was working with Fox. I got the, the, the text message and got the, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I cried my eyes out for two or three days. Then I got angry um, with him because mm. he had everything, you know, and it, it was an illness or whatever it was. Uh, I still, to this day, we don't know. Um, but you couldn't meet a better player. And it hit someone like Craig Bellamy very hard. You know, Ryan yeah. Giggs, uh, Big Norman uh, as well. The, you know, Norman Cook, the, the wonderful goalkeeper. And Norman would phone him up and speed up, would be laughing. Because Norman was just a, a funny, funny guy. And he had that, you know, that, you know, that Welsh accent. And the, you know, we'd call him Taff and, and think yeah. like that. We'd have a laugh about it all. And just a great, great person. Um, still miss now, you know. It, you know, it was his birthday a little while ago, and still can't get your head around it that you know he did that. You know, and obviously Pavel Sonacek, another good friend of ours, and he went far, far too early. Mm -hmm. uh, but with, with Gary, you know, and Gordon Strachan said it, and uh, Gary McAllister as well. We couldn't see it, you know. And Alan spent time with him doing on TV and and being around, and nothing. There was nothing. He never got nervous before games. He never got. Worried about thinking he had a you know beautiful family, you know, great kids, he, his mum and dad, and you, you just couldn't believe it. You couldn't believe it. And you know, the more you talk about it, the more it upsets you and, mm. and things, then you get angry with him because he didn't need to do it. Why didn't he speak to me? Or why didn't he speak to even when I was five thousand miles away and we would text each other like on a Friday or a Thursday, how you doing? And particularly how well he was doing with Wales and Aaron Ramsey, I remember we had a good conversation with Aaron. He said, you watch this kid, he's going to be a hell of a player. And just talking about the young players and how much he loved his job. And he, listen, he was Welsh through and through and patriotic about his country. And we, as I said, we'd have a lot of fun about the Welsh, the Irish and the Scots and everything else. And that's part of, of us, you know, and that's part of what we, we are, part of the British Islands. And for him, uh, it was everything to play for his country and then to manage it. So it, to comprehend what had gone on... I can't, and I don't think anyone can. Uh, only he knows. Um, yeah. but it'd be sorely missed because he was one hell of a player as well. Uh, not only for Newcastle, but for, for when he went to Bolton at the end. He was one of the fittest guys for his age. Everton, obviously. And I remember playing when I, we grew up in the Premier League, me and Speedo, because when he was at Ellen Road with Leeds, they'd hit that bloody long diagonal from Mel Sterling and Speedo would come from the side and I can head it. He had the good looks, the curly hair. I remember doing the commercials for Top Man and things like that. You know, he was, he had everything. And, you know, for him not to be here um, is a crying shame. Um, but, I, you know, again, I can't yeah. speak highly of him. And he was a, not only, as I said, a teammate, he, he was my friend. Um, and I feel a bit guilty sometimes, if I'm being honest, because why didn't I see it? How, how did I not know it was going on or, or whatever, you know? But, it is what it is. And me and Louise yeah. are spoke. Candy's really good. My wife is good friends with Lou. Um, and, you know, we're, we're never going to know. We're never going to know. But I can't, as I said, I can't speak highly about him. I loved him to death. He drove me mad. We'd argue every time in training. But uh, that was part of being, you know, friends, brothers, whatever you want to call it. 